Yes, you guys have had a fantastic morning with a lot of interesting presentations and potential discussions. Um, I'm here today uh, to speak about uh, Scania maintenance and the data-driven uptime journey we have done in developing and globally deploying our condition-based maintenance program. Uh, both from technical perspective, commercial aspects of it, and um, yeah, the challenges and, and opportunities it presents. Um, who am I? My name is Niklas Olsson and I'm head of global product service concepts at Scania and uh, at sales and marketing and my product management team basically work with global service development of, of maintenance repair and uptime services that is uh, later on delivered through our service network and, and produces high quality value to our customers. Um, to start with, I'd like to give a short introduction what Scania is. Scania is a global company within the premium heavy commercial vehicle sector, including truck, buses and engines. We have around 51,000 employees operating in 100 plus countries. And our desired brand image is to be recognized as a true partnership driven leader in the shift towards a sustainable transport system. And what we're going to look here today through our condition based and data driven maintenance program, the precision uh, it gives our customers in their planning and, and, and uh, logistical flow, it really encompasses this uh, desired brand image that we have. So, uh, to develop a condition based maintenance program and, and, and uh, all aspects of Scania's both business and technical development today are more and more become data driven. And we have a lot of connected vehicles around the globe, uh, around 425,000 connected vehicles that produce a lot of exciting data, as you can imagine, operating data, uh, positioning, uh, a lot of interesting facts we can utilize uh, in, in, in our operation today and in our R&D flows, in our business development, in our product development. Um, so around this uh, 425,000 connected vehicles, they collect around 3.3 billion kilometers per month worth of data in many dimensions. And as you can imagine, Scania is, a, 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 is and has always been a precision and engineering at its heart. And the journey towards data-driven business and digitalization is today core for us. And we have many different uh, employees as data engineers, data scientists, constantly involving our data management. Uh, yeah, I said this figure, 3.3 billion kilometers worth of data per month. That's a rich pool of information. We have around uh, 182,000 paid subscriptions uh, for different connected services that we sell today. Uh, we have around 80,000 connected customers uh, end of last year. Uh, we have, uh, uh, with our services, uh, helped customers reduce their fuel consumption through driver evaluation scorings and so on based on these data sets helping them become more efficient and greener in their operation. We have a lot of tachograph uh, files, downloads. Tachograph is basically a log for, uh, for, uh, for how the vehicle has been driven. Um, remote diagnostics, we run a lot of uh, remote diagnostics uh, on our uh, vehicles, meaning we can uh, diagnose uh, health of the vehicles and uh, fault codes, covenetrics and such things. Um, we use, of course, uh, this data to also help uh, in our offering our customers more optimal vehicles uh, uh, when they come to repurchase at, as us. Uh, we also have a lot of more advanced services like fleet care uh, service, where we basically take care and optimize fleets for our customers and their availability. But today we're going to talk about uh, our condition-based maintenance program and today we almost have 120,000 active 
and that is the active pool of, of, of condition-based maintenance agreements, you can uh, call it. But our naming of the solution is called flexible maintenance. Um, so with that said, uh, we need to start with every good thing. Uh, you need to start questioning what is the value of things before you start embarking your journey. And when we start developing our condition-based maintenance program, and our continuous development of our service business model. The question is, where is value created? Well, for our customers, um, we can say that uh, value is created on the road. When they're transporting the goods, then they're adding value to the logistical chain. While we, in our service business, we get paid and the vehicle is not driving on the road. And this is a very contradicting and challenging uh, picture. And I would say, what is the value proposition when we do produce sell services? And how do we price uptime of vehicles? These are questions I will come back to at the end of the presentation. And hopefully with the journey I will describe for you, it will become more clear. But this is of course a very challenging picture. The customer makes money on the road, we make money when the vehicle is standing still. Hmm? So let's took, take a look at the journey. Uh, we have developed products for 125 years plus. Uh, they have become more and more advanced. However, the way our industry has managed to, to maintain these products uh, and the way uh, maintenance of uh, heavy vehicles has been done in the past and, and still is to a large extent today is based on what we call a periodic sequence. Uh, at Skåne we call them SMSL, meaning small, medium, small, large sequence of, of um, maintenance events. And these maintenance events then are periodically estimated based on, on some crude operational or, or basic operational uh, types, uh, long haulage, light long haulage, construction, distribution uh, uh, operation, and so on. So there are some intelligence mixed into the periodic maintenance program, and it does what it does. It's, it's a general estimation, which is good, good and it needs to take uh, quite some hefty precautions into the program to make sure uh, the vehicle is healthy. Uh, and this sort of way of maintaining uh, these products, even though uh, the leftmost truck, I would say, is not is a lot more uh, simple than the foremost right truck. Uh, in this case, the furthermost most right truck is a lot more advanced, a lot of more easy use a lot more complicated uh, uh, product, but for some reason, and for uh, uh, we have maintained this sort of estimated way of maintaining our products until we developed our new range, which we launched 2016, our new generation of trucks. Then we took the opportunity to also develop our condition-based maintenance program. Uh, Meaning we took these crude estimated packages or, or uh, these estimated packages of, of, of content and broke them par apart into smaller modules, uh, making sure what level and granularity of how to break it down. Uh, it, was, it has been a long journey. It still is an ongoing development. We are refining as we speak all day, every day. Uh, and we also made sure to make it backward compatible. So we broke down our maintenance program into smaller pieces and, and we made each piece uh, data driven uh, uh, and, and uh, developed models around this. To explain a little bit more and, and uh, maybe uh, speed up your uh, uh, insights to this, I will now stream a short video uh, to, which illustrates this in a really good way. Scania Maintenance with Flexible Plans is a tailor-made service which, based on how you use your vehicle, tells you when it's time to visit the workshop, aims to maximize uptime and minimize the risk of unexpected and costly stops. 
by using data from the vehicle, exactly the right service, no more, no less, is planned for each vehicle, adapted to route and driving style. Factors such as road roughness, fuel quality, start and stop frequency, all affect which maintenance is needed for your vehicles. For example, driving in dusty environments will affect how often you need to change the air filter. Using real-time operational data and advanced algorithms, the system finds the right service occasion for each individual component. By default, maintenance is scheduled to achieve the longest possible intervals between workshop visits. However, it is possible to tailor a plan to fit the needs of your business. For example, if your business demands shorter workshop visits, decreasing the intervals means more workshop visits but reduces the time spent on each visit. The service plan is dynamically renewed every week and then sent to the vehicle, fleet management portal and all Scania workshops. In due time before the next service, we call to book a visit. Before you arrive, we will do a remote diagnosis to detect and prepare any other repairs needed at the same time. With Scania's extensive experience and knowledge, you can rest assured that maintenance is up to date, even when the conditions change. Maintain peak condition. Scania maintenance with flexible plans. All right, so that was a swift run through through the service, showing all aspects, the customer experience, what we're doing. Sorry for that. It just for some reason restarted. Now we're back. Okay, um, so here's a practical example how we work uh, when developing and continuously developing and where we started to develop as well uh, the, our condition-based maintenance program and our flexible maintenance program uh, from R&D all the way out to our service network in, in a global and scalable model. So with all great things uh, it starts with an idea. In this case, in, in this example we have a challenge and an opportunity when to change the retarder oil and when do we need to plan it and frequency and, and so on and precision. So the idea is that oil ages with, when exposed to heat and then we verify this. We have extremely uh, good opportunities in uh, practical test verification. We have a, a, a climate tunnel where we can test a lot of things, but also we have field test vehicles. And we start testing our idea on whether or not oil and how it sort of ages when exposed to heat in our system, in the gearbox, how is it behaving? And then that work is then led by our uh, retarded development engineer. Um, who starts seeing patterns, opportunities, whether or not we need to place sensors in the vehicles for more frequency data collection and so on. Slowly to get paired with the data scientist, we start seeing what type of models are applicable, what type of data fields do we need in order uh, for the model to predict in an accurate manner. And then we start analyzing larger populations or a connected fleet where we can sort of quantify and qualify our models and then uh, through connecting our sort of uh, optimizing platform out to our also service execution solution and business solutions out in our service network we can start connecting our uh, extremely skilled engineering and r d department with our really skilled uh, service execution functions out in the service network and this is how we continuously develop and started developing our condition-based maintenance program from an um, overview perspective. So tying the, the, the key competences together ensures a data-driven maintenance program. And it's also a very scalable model. 
Mm -hmm. However, it's not only about a good idea whether or not oil, uh, in this case, in the previous case, uh, is aged uh, when exposed to heat. Uh, when developing uh, our program, the, to find the right granularity on on and frequency of data, and what data to collect, and how data is uh, uh, how the system is sort of uh, um, affected by by in which operating conditions a certain vehicle is utilized, uh, we start to identify, and this is the trick also, on what level of, of operational factors do you want to start to collect? Uh, how, how fine grained should your maintenance program be in order to be able to optimize uh, properly? And these are all challenges that took us years and experience to develop. And, and uh, here's a, a subset of example of operational factors such as climate, uh, um, dusty or dust-free environment, salt on the road, start and stop frequency, uh, gross train weight, uh, road quality, road roughness, um, a lot of different operational factors affecting uh, um, the wear and tear of the vehicle and, and also do you need to understand what operational factors do you want as input into your models and predictions and, and it should should be on a, here here the science needs to meet the commercial world as well so so you need to have a customer that's able to explain their business uh, and you need to translate that into operational factors and conditions that makes a commercial viable to build a plan as well um, but this is a standard analytics challenge and, and, and uh, to what granularity you need in order to have good enough predictions uh, to feed your models and also to, to recognize where you need more sensor input data as well. Mm. So the first version of our flexible maintenance program, as you can imagine, was a mathematical symphony, you can say where we only consider technical aspects of the vehicle, when we only uh, consider what the product is needed, needing. But once we started to bring our condition-based maintenance program or flexible maintenance solution to reality, we start realizing there are, are commercial aspects which we didn't think of when building our technically perfect optimizing of a, of a maintenance plan. So, Today, our solution is less of a mathematical symphony, but more of a commercial rock band, I would say, where we not only optimizing the product and what the product is needing, but we're also considering commercial optimization inputs, such as local authority inspection rules in certain markets, uh, seasonality. It's time uh, you don't want to be disturbed as a, a tomato uh, logistical uh, transporter during uh, tomato harvesting in Spain or, or a distribution truck driving out uh, Christmas gifts during uh, Christmas, e Christmas season. So we take a lot of seasonality optimization uh, rules into the uh, building the final uh, maintenance plans today. And there are many, many more commercial aspects that today not only optimizing the maintenance plan based on technical conditions and, and operational uh, data and factory inputs, but also on commercial needs of our customers. So at this point, we have a technically strong foundation in place. We have a, a commercially sound optimized maintenance plan for our different customer operational needs. And now that plan needs to actually happen. So we need to deliver this digitally uh, correct optimized maintenance plan through our service network. And here comes a really uh, strong cornerstone in, 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 in deploying such a data-driven uptime program. It is our service delivery network. And here we have, we have a, a standardized process called dedicated customer service. We have also integrated our commercial business solutions and planning flows with our service network into our off-board optimizing platform and data flows. Meaning through the, the proactive indication of the plan signaling a need, our service network is digitally uh, informed and can then 
start planning and proactively act towards the customer prior any service lamps or any sort of stressful uh, indication inside the truck are starting to signaling. Meaning our customer knows we are contacting them well ahead. We can start planning. We can also start preparing the pit stop experience and the customer can retain control over the logistical planning without feeling stressed or disrupted. But this is really key and also was one of our biggest challenges in implementing our solution was to start uh, changing people's behavior from reactive to proactive and getting this service flow standardized and in place. So uh, there are three sort of customer benefits I like to highlight, which we are motivating why our optimized maintenance and data-driven maintenance plans are far superior any uh, sort of periodic estimated guesses. Um, and here uh, there are three cornerstones, maximum uptime, and of course the peace of mind aspect of the practice service flow. And, look, and this third one, Scania are a premium truck, a precision tool. So by having data-driven maintenance program and a flexible maintenance solution, uh, we take care and make sure the truck is not under or, or, or unnecessarily put out of operation. And under maintain, we take away risk of having a good or a bad driver affecting the, uh, the, 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 the truck's need of maintenance. So in this case, the customer can feel secure in the product performance. So I'd like to go back to the picture where I started. Value. The value of having the truck on the road and the value for Scania by, by servicing it and earning money, uh, uh, selling uh, the necessary repairs and maintenance needed on the vehicles so they stay in good condition. So how, how do I sell this uh, in an in a efficient manner? What should be my value proposition to the customer? As you saw on the previous page, we are not selling workshop hours anymore. We are selling the promise of optimized uptime. We are selling the promise of, of, of our customers' ability to focus on their business rather than on uh, when to maintain vehicles. And also we are promising that the vehicle, each individual vehicle has their individual maintenance plans. Uh, and they are all differently driven by different persons. And this is a risk we remove in securing product performance. And this business model is a strong win-win because on the other hand, us internally at Scania, we get a much, much more uh, efficient uh, service production flow because thanks to the data-driven maintenance plans and the precision in knowing what to do with each individual vehicle, we can prepare our service network in a much, much more efficient manner. There will be less surprises when the vehicles come to the workshop uh, less uh, faults and, 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 and errors found when the vehicle is standing in the workshop, disrupting both the workshop's plan and the customer's plan. So there are a strong win-win in the, in the optimization of our service delivery as well. But what we price and what we make sure the customer understands what they're paying for is not the optimized plan, the service network but but the effects of it and the effects of it are uh, the uptime aspects the peace of mind and the product performance for each individual vehicle and my second to last slide i i, I like this sentence it really sort of encompasses the value of the product and it really explains um, why it has been such a global success for us with almost 120,000 active condition-based maintenance contracts with our flexible maintenance solution. Each individual operation really wears and tears the vehicle differently and, and each individual vehicle needs their own maintenance. No exact same vehicle in same operation or more in the same way. And this really maximizes productivity and decreases disruption for our customers. So, what's around the corner? Will data-driven 
uh, uptime become obsolete. Far from it. Business of data-driven uptime will become even more important. With the electrification around the corner and autonomous solutions just over the hill, data-driven uptime will become not only a, 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 a competitive edge, but the necessity to stay uh, relevant. Um, that was all for me today. I hope I didn't speak too fast because I'm very passionate about the subject. Uh, if you have any questions, maybe we will have time for that. Uh, I'll let the, the, the moderators decide whether or not we have time for questions. Okay, good. Thank you all. It was a pleasure.